Hello Vinyl community, thanks for tuning in. So um, today I would like to abandon uh, my usual process of uh, just showing some of the records I listened today or yesterday uh, before I put them back into the archive. So today I thought I would do something that uh, creates a little bit more of a focus on, uh, on a particular style and particular labels. And I'm talking about new jazz because I listened to some of the old new jazz records I have here so I thought I will compile a little overview. Now the new jazz genre or style is something that took off around 1992, 1994 to 1995 and uh, was quite uh, present in the music scene all the way through to 2005 maybe. Well, despite being an interesting uh, musical development and interesting uh, development of the jazz genre in general, um, I always felt like new jazz is something that is being uh, overlooked a little bit sometimes in terms of the one musical movement, probably beside hip-hop, that contributed a lot to the survival of vinyl in general. Well, because I remember how it was in 1992. I mean, 1992, the general tone was that vinyl is finished. Like, in five years, there will, no, there will be no more vinyl anymore. Not in the stores, maybe some collectors sort of uh, uh, trading it amongst each other, but not as any kind of a business model. And that's what the, the factories uh, did back in the day. They downsized their production lines for vinyl and they upgraded their production lines for CDs. That was just the tone of the day. Now not everybody was happy about that and I think the, the, most, uh, vocal, the most vocal scene that rejected this development was certainly the DJs. The DJs of the 90s. But of course uh, the thing is you cannot sustain a, a a business segment by supplying DJs because DJs are not enough in quantity I and mean, you have one DJ for 500 dancing people and only he sort of needs the vinyl in his hand to work it, to manipulate it, to play it in, uh, in venues while the 500 people that came into the dance hall are quite happy with the CD that they can put in their car while they drive home in, in the night. So um, it seems like uh, this whole battle is somehow lost, but um, it's not exactly true and uh, there is obviously a tiny bottleneck in the late 90s that kind of, that kind of um, helped Vinyl to survive this crisis and that is the new jazz movement because suddenly even the consumer started to buy or to keep buying vinyl records uh, during those years. And even though most of these labels that did new jazz albums probably mostly financed themselves by putting out uh, compilations on CD, uh, they still had a lot of going for them on vinyl and people were buying it, not only DJs. Probably from all this uh, sort of club-oriented and dance-oriented music, uh, new jazz is the one direction, new jazz and downtempo is the one direction where um, you find a lot of uh, uh, non-DJing community just going to stores and buying records, buying vinyl and keeping their turntables going. So that's kind of what I wanted to say about the mid and late 90s. Now I want you to start with this peculiar album, which is called the Jazz EP Dance Floor. It's not a particularly good album, I must say, um, and, and it, its quality is not the reason why I'm showing it. Although it has one or two nice tracks on it, Colorless Emptiness by Symphonic is a nice jazz song, uh, very mellow, and there's a nice track called German Funkster Theme by Twen. Um, now, uh, Besides the fact that this was completely uh, sponsored by Philip Morris, and I think like in the early 90s Philip Morris was financing everything in Europe, <laughs> trying to get some more young people to light up a cigarette. Um, but um, it has this nice uh, 
logo here, which some of the labels used in those days. So it was the Save the Vinyl logo. But why I'm showing it is this album is compiled by a man called Michael Reinbold. Now I will talk about him later because uh, this is 1993 and only a year later Michael Reinbold was about to set up uh, probably the biggest new jazz label there ever was in Munich. But we get to that later. Now I want to start in Vienna. Um, the place where the G-Stone label was uh, created and uh, so probably the first album to show you is of course uh, G-Stone by Kruder and Dorfmeister which is certainly a game-changing record uh, starting point to uh, the whole down-tempo movement and a uh, very cool album um, of course, additionally famous for its uh, spoof cover of uh, Simon and Garfunkel's bookends. And uh, as I said, this came out in uh, 1994 in Vienna. I think it was released internationally uh, maybe a year later. Yeah, so it has this Save the Vinyl logo here too. So um, G Stout is a wonderful uh, sort of... Uh, uh, definitely marijuana inspired album uh, with a beautiful down tempo sound and it's very uh, very relaxed and um, it's a seminal album now um, Richard Dorfmeister of Crude on Dorfmeister went to create his own project which is called Tosca and this is the Suzuki EP by Tosca I think this is also a G Stone uh, yeah this this was also released on G-Stone. Uh, this is, not, this is uh, not the complete album, but this EP is a selection of some tracks from it. Well, that's what I call a nice label. So this is another example of great uh, atmospheric uh, down-tempo sound. Um, very uh, recommendable. So Vienna has become quite this uh, this uh, spot for uh, down tempo music. So here's another example from a different label by Vienna Scientist. Uh, it's Soul Samba by Freedom Satellite. So this is uh, more of a jazzy uh, samba inspired track. This is a 12 inch yeah, um, so uh, in 1994, Michael Reinbold set up the Compost Records, the Compost label in Munich. And here they started to put some heavy emphasis on, uh, on uh, new jazz music. So probably the most famous project coming from this haven is, uh, of course, Jazzanova. Now, Jezanova started in 1995, as far as I remember. Um, they did their first album much later, in 2002, but before that, what they released were mostly 12 inches or remixes of other tracks uh, in the same vein. Um, so, um, two of them, two EPs by Jezanova, uh, all came out on Compost, is this one, which... Uh, has a uh, caravel on it, an introspection, two great tracks by Jezanova. And this one is of course with uh, Fadime's Flight and uh, <laughs> and uh, Alle der Kosmonauten, which is another great track by Jezanova. Now this is a nice EP, but that did not come out on Compost. This is Liquid Lounge versus Jezanova. There are some great tracks, by, especially by Liquid Lounge, of the track called Lemon Tea, which is brilliant. Um, nice 12 inch, but very thin vinyl. This is probably my thinnest record. This is almost like, a, I don't know, like a flexi disc. So, uh, who knows, maybe one day I see it somewhere on a really thick vinyl, but I don't think so. Yeah, and um, of course this um, is the big Jezanova remix box that came out in 2000. 
and which contains uh, five uh, 12 inches. You can see here. And um, well, this brings together all of uh, Jezanova's remix work, which covers mostly projects like uh, United Future Organization or uh, Four Hero, uh, Liquid Lounge, Ian Pooley, Ursula Rucker, Soul Bossa Trio from Japan, and so on. So, this is a fantastic box. Um, yeah, um, Compost Records put out also the records by uh, Modachi, which is also Harvey Lindo. You can see here. So only in parts, new jazz, I would see this much closer to the to the to the hip hop and down tempo environment. Yeah, it's a good record. This world by Rima. It's a double album. Another compass production. There's a lot of uh, sort of new jazz and uh, uh, drum and bass parts in it. Now the third label I wanted to mention is Studio K7 in Berlin. Now this is a label that started uh, much earlier in 1984, but it wasn't before 1995 that they started to put a lot of emphasis on um, yeah, on, on jazzy vibes and sounds, so mostly sort of jazz house and, and new jazz music. Yeah, so one of the flagships of this era is of course the Trübe Trio. Um, so this is their major uh, remix work called DJ Kicks. So it's part of the DJ Kicks series uh, which went on in those years uh, by other artists as well. High Jazz is a series of 12 inches uh, that were put out uh, on Compost Records and that include remixes by people like Nicola Conti for example. And finally here this is the Carajilo 12 inch uh, which is also a remix by Jezanova. Um, yeah, and um, now Trübe Trio without Rainer Trübe uh, is of course Fauna Flash. This is Confusion. This is a remix album of their Fusion album. Um, so this is Fauna Flash. This is a brilliant record. It's also a double 12 inch package, which is quite a standard model in this musical scene. Yeah, and finally I have just two 12 inches from Compost that are kind of nice. The one is uh, the Train and Trekker by TJ Kong and Nuno dos Santos, um, which sound a um, little bit uh, in the direction of dub. So it's a kind of jazzy dub uh, down tempo sound. And um, I think this was a one-off called Funkin. Um, it's a very jazzy, sort of a, sort of a boogie sounding uh, tracks on it uh, with a bass line that is, I think, pretty much stolen from Marvin Gaye. I mean... Does that ring a bell? Well, it's a nice record. I think, I don't know exactly who's behind this, but they never did anything more than this. So this was a little little glimpse into the German new jazz scene of the mid and late 90s. And um, their own role they played in the survival process of vinyl. So I hope you liked it and um, I'll probably do one or two more in this musical direction. Bye bye.